So it turns out that the real numbers taken together as a set form something called a field. And here's how that works. We have first the set of real numbers that was denoted by the funny looking R. We have two binary operations, something that we call addition and something that we call multiplication. And we have a set of properties, which I'm going to show you in a second. But if we take all these things together, then we have a field. So the set of real numbers does indeed form a field. So let's look at these properties. So first we have closure, and we had seen this a little bit before. If A and B are real numbers, then A plus B is a unique real number. And the same thing works for multiplication. So we saw, first of all, we'll get an example here. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 2 and 3 are both real numbers, and 5 is also a real number. And here it is for multiplication. If A and B are real numbers, then A times B is a unique real number. So 2 times 3 is 6. Both 2 and 3 are real numbers. And when we apply the binary operation of multiplication, we get back another real number, 6. OK. Commutative. So the commutative property also has both uh, an additive and multiplicative uh, counterpart. If A and B are real numbers, then A plus B equals B plus A. In other words, it doesn't matter what order you add in. An example would be 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. It seems really obvious, but we need it if we're going to have uh, something called a field. It has to be one of the properties that we have. And for multiplication, same thing. If A and B are real numbers, then A times B equals B times A. And an example would be 2 times 3 is 3 times 2. Associative. So if A, B, and C are three real numbers, then A plus B plus C is the same thing as A plus B plus C. In other words, you can move the parentheses around. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 4. Again, nothing that's terribly profound, but we do need this property. Same thing with multiplication. We can move the parentheses around through multiplication, and then we would get something like this for an example. 2 times 3 times 4 is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 4. There's something called an identity, and this is a member of the set of real numbers. And we have two kinds of identities. We have an additive identity and a multiplicative identity. So if A is any real number, then there exists a unique real number, which we call 0, such that A plus 0 equals 0 plus A, and that gives you back A. In other words, 3 plus 0, that's the same thing as 0 plus 3, which gives you back 3. The identity is something that kind of gives you back what you had. So another example might be negative 12 plus 0 equals 0 plus negative 12, and that gives you back negative 12. For multiplication, it's a little bit different. If A is any real number, then there exists a unique real number, which we're going to call 1, such that A times 1 is 1 times A, and that gives you back A. So it works the same way in the sense that it gives you back the same thing, but now instead of a 0, we're going to use 1. So for example, 2 times 1, that's 1 times 2, and that gives you back 2. Inverses. For any real number a, there is a unique real number, which we're going to call negative a, such that when you apply the binary operation of addition, we get back the identity, which in this case was 0. So 2 plus negative 2, that gives you back 0, the identity. Same idea for multiplication, except remember, we can't divide by 0. So we have to say for any non-zero real number a, there is a unique real number, 1 over a, such that when we multiply them together, we get back the multiplicative identity, which remember was 1. So 3 times a third, that gives you back 1. Finally, we have the distributive property. And that says that if a, b, and c are real numbers, then a times the quantity b plus c equals a times b plus a times c. And so this is the only property that really combines both addition and multiplication, our two binary operations. And you've seen this many, many times where you've, uh, you've distributed some algebraic expression. So for example, 2 times the quantity 3 plus 4 can be rewritten as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. OK, so here are the field properties. I've put them all together in one handy chart. 
the addition first and then the multiplication. And notice distributive kind of combines both addition and multiplication. So that one's at the bottom. My advice would be not to memorize these because, uh, well, there's a lot of them and they're kind of confusing when you first see them, but rather start working with them and, and try to use the names if you can. And you'll probably just learn them without even having to try memorizing. Um, if you're taking a class and your teacher or professor says you have to memorize them, I'm sorry. I know it sucks to have to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but um, knowing the names does help because mathematicians will refer to the commutative property or the associative property. So if you can, just try to start working with them and you'll learn them without even having to try to memorize them.